Today in the news, we got Intel's last ditch effort and a pretty cool mouse. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. The company is definitely in hot water in pretty much all segments. In mobile CPUs, you have AMD's upcoming Ryzen 4000. In the mainstream, AMD has the ultimate performance crown with the 3950X. And in the HEDT platform, they basically have no legs to stand on with their $1,000 18 core CPU. Well, now, according to some recent leaks, they might not be done fighting, at least in the HEDT platform. Now, keep in mind that you definitely need a grain of salt for this one as the information comes from a chip hell forum post and was then picked up by computer base all right so the leak apparently even though most of the lineup has been released intel might be planning another addition to cascade lake x on x299 it would be a 22 core 44 thread cpu called the 10990 x8 now i know that because of amd core counts seem kind of trivial but hey it's nice to see intel hasn't completely given up according to the photos posted on the forum this chip clocked at 5 gigahertz and that's presumably on all core has a score of 14,005 points on Cinebench R20 which would put it right up against a 24 core AMD 3960X. So how does that work? Well considering how boost is managed from AMD not all cores are pushed up to the 4.5 gigahertz. Some of them will be at the base of 3.8 others will hover around 4 etc etc. This is probably where the Intel CPU could shine by having all cores at the highest frequency possible. Keep in mind, photos like this can easily be faked, so once again, grain of salt. The next pretty impressive thing, and not in a good way, is its rated TDP. According to the leak, it shoots way past the rumors of the 10900K we saw on the last video at 300 watts and reaches 380 watts. Now, you could boil a steak at this TDP. Seriously, my induction cooker boils water at 300 watts. Anyways, if the rumors are true, Intel would have something to compete with AMD's lowest end Threadripper. Would it be worth it to go for a 10990XE over a 3960X? Well, mostly no. There's no upgrade path from there. You would likely have to invest in a heck of a better cooler, but some people might find it the right option for them. If you're already on X299, for example, you wouldn't have to buy a new motherboard. And that's quite a chunk of change, especially for AMD's TR40 platform. Also, depending on the price of this CPU, it might make an Intel solution a little cheaper to start with. A 3960X paired with a TRX40 board will cost you a minimum of $1,800. If Intel prices this thing right, a full solution might save you a couple of hundreds. Also, if you're in a small room and it's too cold during the winter, you can run Cinebench on a loop. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about this monster. Let me know down below. Moving on to some peripheral news, Asus just came out with a new wireless gaming mouse called the Charcom. I think that's how you're supposed to say it. It was shown off at Gamescom last year, but it's finally coming to market. Now, I usually don't really talk about peripherals this much, but this one has a pretty cool feature set. First of all, it's fairly modular. You can swap out the buttons if you're into that kind of modding, and you can also customize the RGB badge at the back of the mouse. And the Omron switches are replaceable since they are pushed to fit. It supports wireless charging, and fast charging too, you also have better control over the DPI settings. Instead of pressing a single button to cycle through a selection of DPI levels, you can press the button under the mouse and use the scroll wheel to set it up. Great for precision without having to use a software. But the main attraction is on the side. There's a joystick on the mouse. That's pretty cool. It can be used like a joystick for analog movements, giving you more control than WASD, and it can also act as four programmable buttons depending on where you tilt it. Asus also provides a few different joystick options, like a taller one or a wider one. I really like this concept, I just wish it had one or two more buttons so that you could try and play a full game with just the mouse. It is pretty pricey though at $150 US. And now in gaming news, for the second year in a row, it looks like Sony is going to skip E3. A spokesperson told Games Industry that the company does not feel the vision of E3 2020 is the right venue for what they are focused on this year. It's understandable. I mean, they can save that cash and put it where it counts. It will, however, mean that Xbox will have the whole platform to give us more details on the next-gen consoles. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. Subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Man, those t-shirts barely fit me anymore. I really need to go back to the gym. Barely.